Hey everybody, this is Dr. Maples, and today we're going to continue our series on publishing undergraduate research by talking about your analysis section. And I got some great news. The analysis section is actually the easiest part of your entire paper. In fact, you wrote the entire recipe for this section by writing your methods report in the previous section. All we got to do is follow those details, and we're going to create an analysis section that does everything that your professor is going to expect, and also everything a journal is going to expect to see to publish your research. All right, we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. Now, before we get started, could I ask a really quick favor? Would you be willing to flip over to your social media pages and share one of my videos? This would help me grow this channel and get word about this channel out. Likewise, it will help me help students just like you have an easier time in college than I did. I'd appreciate your help. Likewise, if you share a video, leave a comment below and let me know. I'll be sure to thank you personally. Now, when we're working on an analysis section, we're gonna work this into five independent pieces. It makes it easy to work through this whole process and make sure we don't forget anything. First one is we gotta create a descriptive statistics table that describes all the variables that are in any of your hypotheses. For this table, it's very straightforward. You're gonna take your data set in any statistical processor of your choice and simply describe your variables in a table. What I like to do is create a table that has my continuous variables in there. And then if I have categorical variables, I can either recode them so that they're continuous or I can make a categorical descriptive statistics table where it stands alone. Now for my continuous variables, I like to have a column that includes the name of the variable and I'll include any little special notes about the variable that I need to below that. Um, I'll also make sure to have columns that talk about the number of cases in that variable, the minimum and maximum values for that variable. We'll also have a column for the mean and also for the standard deviation. And then you put a title on that table and you're good to go. You've got everything that you'll need. Now, our next step is to build another table. And it might be a couple of tables depending on how many hypotheses you have and what kind of hypotheses you have. This second table or series of tables is actually going to be where you show the testing process for your hypotheses. Now for this, what I like to do is make sure to build the table so it's clear what hypotheses you're gonna test. For t-tests, I'll actually list every t-test individually. I'll even put the hypothesis in the tables if I feel it's necessary to make it very clear. For something like regression, you could have models that would list the hypotheses that you're testing. Whatever is going to work best for your approach. And you can always reach out to me in the comments below or your professor to get help with the best way to approach that. The idea here is that I, as a researcher, could simply pick up your paper and I don't have to read anything. I could just glance at your tables and I should be able to know exactly what tests were held and exactly what your findings were. That's the whole idea here because we wanna make sure we're stating all of your findings in a table format. And that's it for tables. We got our first table, which is a descriptive statistics table. And finally, we've got our analyses that tested in the second series or single table, depending on your approach. So we've got everything covered for the tables. Now what we need to do is step to steps three and four, we're actually gonna start talking about these. Now for step three, I wanna talk about your descriptive statistics table or tables, if there were more. And then this is a simple approach to you basically telling the reader a story about your data. What I generally like to do is talk about the interesting things about each variable. I'll, for example, talk about the means for all of the variables, and I'll often go into the data set and look for interesting cases, especially with the min and max values. For example, if I'm working with a county level data set, I'll go in and see what counties got some of those really low mins or high maxes and talk about those. I won't think about what it means. I won't try to approach it and try to explain it. Uh, I'm really just gonna say, you know, yeah, this case was kind of interesting because it was really low or this case was really high. And that's really it for step three. We wanna go through all of, our all of our variables and talk about them. Again, we're just telling the reader a little bit about this table. You don't have to spend probably more than a paragraph, maybe a little more to talk about that first table because we're really just giving people a basic idea of the variables. Now, after that, when we move to step four and we start talking about our analyses tables, well, we need to spend some really, really detailed time on this. What I suggest doing is going back to your hypotheses and for these tables or table, 
go through each hypothesis and talk about them individually. Now, you can talk about the significant findings, the things that were statistically meaningful, um, where a relationship seems to exist based on your hypothesis test. But I actually like to go through every hypothesis and talk about whether or not the model was significant and just talk about anything that I can to let the reader know what I'm talking about when I look at these tables. Likewise, I think it's fine to have short paragraphs that go after each of these hypotheses. Some journals and some professors may prefer that you make it into one paragraph, and that's fine too. You go with whatever's gonna work best for you. Finally, we move on to our fifth step. And this is actually something that we kind of already did in the fourth step, but I like to do it as sort of a nice pretty bow on this analysis section. And that's where we're gonna talk yet again about our hypotheses. I like to spell out in this last paragraph exactly which null hypotheses I found evidence to reject and which null hypotheses I could not reject. What this does is it lets the reader know for sure exactly which of your hypotheses that you're supporting and which ones maybe need more research or maybe there's just nothing there. But this last section lets you put a nice pretty bow on your analysis section. Wasn't that easy? We do tables, we do some short write-ups about it, and then we put in a section that talks about our hypotheses and spells it out exactly what we found. In fact, what this does is it sets us up for this next section in a sociology paper where we'll discuss our results. That's it. The analysis section, as I promised, is the easiest one in the paper. And in fact, now you've built up to the point that you made this great recipe for a cake in your method section, and now you've made that cake. So what we got to do now is talk about that cake in our upcoming section on the discussion of what all this means. We'll also return to our theories that we may have used in our lit review and re-engage those to really try and understand exactly what this whole finding really means in the world. But that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, I'd love to see some comments below. And if you could share it on your social media, that would be awesome. Likewise, if there's a video you'd like me to make in the future, you just let me know. All right, that's it for today. I will see everybody next time. Take care.